Welcome everyone to Chibi No Podcast, and it's Monday news, and you have me, David Smashman, and me, Mister Mister. And today, sadly, we're missing uh, Mouse the Tech Guy, but it's all good. He will be here for next week. So, as always, if this is your first time listening, we we give you a roundup of all the news that's happened the past few days on Monday to help you guys through the rest of the week. So, let's get started with some big news here. So. If you haven't noticed, Netflix has been doing a lot of live actions of a lot of anime. Um, and I mean, with the first one being Death Note, which was actually atrocious. It was bad. But they're still kind of going with these live action or CGI adaptations of anime, whatever. So their next big one, which was announced a while ago, was they were going to do a live action adaptation of Cowboy Bebop. Well, now, after months of no news, we finally have some cast listings. So for Spike... We're going to have John Cho be Spike. Now, he's the guy that's from Harold and Kumar. Um, if you've ever watched um, How I Met Your Mother, he's in there when um, when Marshall interviews for Hewitt and, and whatever for that law, for, law firm. And he's also in the movie, I think it was called Searching. It was that, uh, s- that suspense th- um, thriller horror type one. This one, uh, I'm, actually not, I'm actually okay with. Um, I know this... There's some people that might have um, some issues with it because, like, again, if this is anime. We know that he's Japanese, um, but at least the way you see John Cho, he's gonna have to grow his hair out. Um, I, I don't know about you, uh, Mister Mister. What do you think about John Cho being Spike? I think it's a good pick. Um, I just wish this was like ten years ago because I think he's kind of a little bit too old looking. I mean, obviously they can CGI him to make him look younger. But I do feel like he's a little bit too old. Maybe. He looks um, too old. Cause, like in the pictures that they showed of him, he kind of looked like he had very big uh, wrinkles on the forehead and everything. I mean, it's just me and my uh, how I viewed it. I, I viewed Spike being a bit younger. But it just all depends on how they go about it. So it doesn't matter to me. If he plays a good performance, then I'm, I'm, all, I'm all ears. Yeah, and then we have Mustafa Shakir, who I don't know who he is, but he's going to be Jet. Um, that one's going to be cool. The one that I don't like too much is we have Daniela Pineda as Faye Valentine. So she's the science, science, uh, science girl in Jurassic Park Fallen Kingdom. Um, I don't know. I, I, I just picture someone different uh, being Faye than this girl. That's just me. I, I, I don't know. Uh, uh, I mean, I guess, yeah. I was thinking more of an Asian woman. Um, but I mean, what can you do? You know, it, it's whoever got the part, whoever did it well, they get it. Yeah, I mean, again, they don't have a good uh, track record because Death Note wasn't that good. Fullmetal Alchemist, it looked okay, but they changed the lore so much that it, and they added things and brushed things together that it wasn't that that great. So this one, I mean. There is hype to it, but also it's like I don't know how they're gonna they're, ruin this. They're treading light water. People are are excited, but they're treading lightly because of the um, the dis- like terror, the, the discussion, the blah blah blah. What it is, you know, of um, Death Note, how bad Death Note was. So they're excited, right. but I mean, they're they're treading lightly because they don't want to be uh, you know slapped again. And the last one we have is we have Alex Hassel is vicious. Um, so those, that's all that we have for uh, as of right now. We'll we'll see how it goes. Again, <laughs> Vicious and Alex. Uh, if you see Alex Hassel's picture, like it doesn't. I don't know how they're gonna do this. So again, uh, you're just gonna have to not compare it to the actual how they look like in the anime because it's gonna be different. You're just gonna see how they feel and how they they feel the part. So hopefully, like, again, we're hoping for good stuff, but we don't know. So anyway, what's next, Mister Mister? Um. They so on um well it's Facebook where I remembered it, but they released a <coughs> sorry a clip of uh, the Avengers. It's an official clip, and so if you recall, there was it was parts of the part where they're trying to find everybody what they want to do, what they need to do, um to bring everyone back, and basically it's just an extended clip. It's about a minute thirteen, and it just has everyone and there there's. And what Widowmaker? Widowmaker, <laughs> I'm off today. Uh, Black Widow saying she's saying oh, yeah. no. Black Widow saying that Thanos had used the stones again because I guess they 
it emanates a power. And so they're kind of discussing on if they should go and attack. And um, just basically that. They're just debating on if they should do this or not. And Cap is saying yes. And then um, Captain Marvel, she's saying like, you have me so we can win this. Because one of the arguments was like, what can you do? Like or like, what what can what makes it different for us this time around? She says, "I'm here," so it's just showing you that they're really heavily relying on her. This, and, um, yeah, it's just pretty good. It, it's it's cool. It's giving you a lot of uh, heavy tones, and so I'm just I'm excited to see where they're gonna go with this. This clip has has come with some controversy with some of the more feminist uh, people who are watching because they're like, "Why is she all dolled up? Why does she have all this makeup on?" I was like, "I don't know." She, she looks, wanted to. Yeah, she looks, she's, a, she's a quote unquote powerful woman, so let her do her own thing, people. Yeah, and it's funny though, like they're also like, oh, this explains um, where she was located. I was like, uh, well, okay, so Randy Road asks, like, where have you been all this time? She's like, well, there's planets on here that don't have, you know, people like you. And so they're like, oh, that's where she's been. I was like, oh, I, I don't know if that explains everything. All we know from the end was that she was going to help the uh, the scroll find a new place. And then after that, I don't know. I, I, I don't know if she was just going around just beating up bad guys and liberating the people. But it's funny how like if she's been doing that, that no one else has listened to her and that she was never and that Ronin never like tried to find her again. Because in the movie, it's stated that they want to use her. Um, yeah, but it's never. But no, like, I mean, Guardians of the Galaxy never mentioned that she was even uh, on his radar. So it's kind. Of, it's it's just funny. Like they're just trying to input her in everything and forcing her way in. Like oh, she's always been in there, but it, it's not it's really working just out. Bad, it's bad storytelling because they're trying to. Yeah, like you said, they're trying to fit her in, and it's like okay, where were you for all this other stuff? It's just yeah, it's just bad writing. In the, but then again, it feels like they kind of put her in and it was kind of all jumbled up. So I think what can we do? Yeah. Well, anyway, let's keep going. So next one is about Funimation and about Dragon Ball Z. So on April 7th, I believe, or April 6th, they uh, Funimation announced or showed what the possible art style in the boxes will look like for the 30th anniversary Blu-ray of Dragon Ball Z. It's going to be in the 4 by 3 ratio, how it originally came through. And... The trailer was not that good because the trailer looked bad. It looked like some of the stuff that they've done before on the Blu-rays, where it the Blu-rays were very like, '90s, very '90s trailer, and it just didn't catch well, here's, you. Well, here's the thing, and, and I'll, I'll put a link in the description because an, Anime AJ does a whole breakdown of it, and basically stating that they they tried to remaster it and tried to like get rid of the grain that's on the that's been on the on the film or whatever on the uh, on the drawings and it just kind of made the backgrounds look more watercolor and there's and there's these different um these different uh shots they have from like kai to what they're sh- what funimation is showing right now and it kai looks a whole lot better than what they're sending us with this and now the whole thing is though but this probably isn't the final product they're probably showing us stuff from the blu-rays that they previously had because they're still in their um, phase of trying to get enough money to make this. It's three hundred fifty dollars, and I think only six thousand they're gonna make of these. And so they, if they, they need at least six thousand to make it. And so the whole thing is like I don't think that they've made the remastered parts. I don't think the trailer has shown that. If it did, if that was like a clip of them of the remastered, it's gonna be horrible. Just stick to your Blu-rays because it's not gonna be worth it. I mean, I mean, we even talked about it. it's 350 for the entire thing. If you look at what they're including in the art book, the the statue, and then the blueies itself, it's still way overpriced. This is really for people for collecting stuff, obviously, because it says collector's yeah. edition. But it's gonna suck if it doesn't actually look really good. So I'm hoping that they get the actual remasters that Japan and Toei have done, and use that to sell here. Because if they're gonna do the remasters that they've done, it's not gonna be worth that money. And so, well, the thing is, this this remaster that they're providing is the is the toy one. They just need to come up with the money to release the, the remaster. But they've the never downside, shown the, the yes, video of it. Toy Toy has doesn't have it ready. That's how Toy does it. Remember with the Dragon Ball Super Broly, how when we saw clips of the trailer, they were not the finished product. So this is Toy being cheap. 
Um, uh, well, I don't know. Sucks. If you want a good point of reference, if you can get your, if you can change your VPN to watch Netflix in Japan, you can watch the Dragon Ball Z movies that got of their true remaster, a true true remaster. Then you'll know what the Dragon Ball Z movie uh, show will be remastered to. It's a good point of reference, but for the time being, it is not worth it. Yeah, so you're gonna take a gamble if you go and pre-order it, but hopefully it does well. That that's if you have money, go ahead and throw what your money want to do. Yeah. All right, what's next, Mister Mister? Dragon Quest. Um, so, a Dragon Quest movie uh, trailer launched four days ago in Japan, and it looks really beautiful. Um, Dragon Quest, for those who don't know, is a video game um, from like the '90s, right, to now. Like uh, different iterations of it have been made, and uh, it's a very popular RPG game. Um, that's been around for ages and um the the art style in the games was uh from akira toriyama who does dragon ball z and stuff but when this trailer was released it's not akira's art style and not even mentioned in the credits yeah he's not even mentioned in the credits i think it's an original art style it kind of reminds me of um how to train your dragon but like japan's version of it and I think I feel like it's kind of an insult to this because he helped create these designs and they're not wanting to use it. There's two criticisms for this movie so far. They said, A, again, this is more Japanese. They said that instead of getting the base voice actors, they've kind of done the Studio Ghibli Disney thing where they try to get big name celebrities to make the movie big or like to get everyone hyped for it. And the second one, again, is the Kira Torma design not being in the, in the animation style at all. So we'll just have to see how that goes. Um, that's kind of a bummer because I wanted to see Akira's drawings yeah. come to this world because they're all beautiful. They're beautiful. Like if you play the new Dragon Quest games, they are in the, that heavily 3D animated way, but you know, obviously it's not going to be as detailed as that. But it's beautiful. But this one is just as beautiful, but it's not Akira Toriyama's designs. And that's what's the bummer for me. All right. The one, one more piece of news before we go into a, a little quick review is uh, CinemaCon was was done i think it was last week in las vegas and people got to see a snip a little teaser of sonic the hedgehog and there's been mixed at best like they some people don't like the way that it, i mean obviously he's been criticized of what he looks like they said he looks too muscular um his not, muscles are rarely defined it's weird yeah and it's it's weird and uh and we and they got to see dr robotnik who jim carrey's playing which i actually do want to see because i think jim carrey plays the weird people very well and such something that he's known for and that he can do so i'm excited to see that but but again other than that like it hasn't been made public we'll probably get it sometime in the summer um it's gonna come in theaters in november so i don't know all i've heard is is just negative stuff um the image leaks that were that we were provided uh, a couple months ago are a good base point of where they're going to have it what's going to what sonic's going to look like and i can already tell you this much it is not good because oh. one um sonic is sponsored by nike i'm pretty sure because he has nike shoes and then the weirdest thing that people were arguing about is his hands he does not wear gloves his hands just are hedgehog hands and it's creepy this makes no sense but whatever okay so final piece uh we're doing about a about a minute uh we went and saw shazam and i was pleasantly surprised i honestly didn't think i would like it so i'll give you my 20 seconds of my review it was actually really good it it kind of poked fun at itself uh of being a superhero movie um but it was really relatable um I would say go watch it. They they kind of incorporated different lore stuff together for the Shazam thing, which I really liked. And Tom Brody's in it, which I haven't seen him since the OC, and so it was cool to see him. What about you? What about you, Miss Mister? Quick, like, I liked 20 it seconds. a lot. Um, I liked it a lot. Uh, I liked that it took itself lightly. It, it choked around with itself. Um, I was surprised that they were able to pull off Shazam's costume from the comics because a lot of the times we see a different iteration of the costumes for a real life version. So I really enjoyed that they used the comic version to this, and it made I enjoyed the ride. It was good. Some things were just kind of a little annoying for me. The just obviously they were kids, so they're gonna tell a lot of kid jokes. 
so that's that they remind it, you their I, that they remind you their kids all the time. Hey, yes. don't forget he's a kid. Oh, he's a yes. kid. Don't remember. Don't forget. Um, there were a lot of funny moments, but yeah. Other, other than that, it was a great movie. I loved it. It's worth watching. I think it's. I give it eight point five, eight point eight out of ten. Yeah, about the same. I wish that they would have had Black Adam in this movie. Uh, cause that was originally the idea to have Black Adam, so The Rock play that. But I think they're saving him for the sequel, which, from the money it's made, it, it does sound like they're gonna make a second one. Yeah, I think it will. All right, perfect. So thanks so much for listening to Monday News. We'll be back again next week. This is David the Smash Fan, Mister Mister, and this is Chibi No Podcast. See ya.